Hello everyone, I am Dr. Neha and now I am ready with yet another uh, topic on ultraviolet spectroscopy. We have seen so many uh, videos posted on my channel based on Lambert's Beer's law on electromagnetic spectrum and all. Now in continuation to that, uh, let us see today what is Woodward Fisher rule. Now those who know ultraviolet spectroscopy, they know that this particular rule is having extreme importance in finding out the wavelength of a particular compound. Woodward Fisher, which like you can see their pictures here, they have proposed a set of rules in order to uh, predict the wavelength of a compound. Uh, now we know that uh, there is a concept of chromophore and oxochromes and then there are certain shifts like we uh, saw bathochromic shift and then you have uh, hypsochromic, hyperchromic, hypochromic uh, shifts like based on the wavelength and the intensity if it is decreasing or it is increasing and there are certain factors behind those shifts. Now once you understood all of these patterns and like if you have developed any compound and you want to predict what would be the wavelength of its absorption, you can successfully use Woodward Fisher rule. Uh, Woodward actually had start, uh, started that particular rule for correlating that particular lambda max with molecular structure. So it goes vice versa. And in 1959, Fisher joined him, he modified the rule and the combined rule now is known as Woodward-Fisher rule. So this is very helpful in calculating the lambda max for a given structure and we need to look on all of those factors which are responsible for the change. So uh, according to him, uh, these factors do contribute and you have to calculate their contribution as well along with the base value of the compound. Now, before going with the base value means you have to first identify the diene system or a triene system. So double bond system you have to first identify. Now then base value would be calculated but there are certain terminologies which you should understand before proceeding with that. Let us start with first one which is like homo annular diene. Homo means same right so if the diene that means two enes that is double bond you can see the structure here two of the double bond are present in the same ring so this particular diene setup is a homo annular diene at the same time it is known as hetero annular diene if the conjugated double bonds are in two separate rings here you can see ring a you can see ring B. So one double bond of this diene is in ring A and another double bond is in ring B. So for that you have to call it as homodiene because a single ring is there and heterodiene because two different rings are there. Then comes which type of bond it is. So the bond if it is present in the ring you will call it as endocyclic bond since this bond is present inside the ring and if this bond is present outside the ring then you will call it as an exocyclic double bond. Now this is an example of an exocyclic double bond. This double bond is outside this ring A. Now in certain uh, structures you may find uh, a difficult uh, T in identifying the compounds or the diets. So let us just quickly see these structures whether we are getting the things properly or not. So here if you can see ring A and B. So which type of diene it would be? Homo or hetero? Based on the definition. Yes, you guessed it right. It is hetero because two bonds are in separate rings. Then based on that, is it endo or exo? The double bond. So I'll call this bond number one and this bond number two. Now if you can see the bond number one, bond number one is inside ring B. So obviously one is endo to B because it is inside the ring B. But at the same time, one, the carbon of the double bond and the carbon of this ring is common. That means this one number bond is exo to ring A. It is endo to ring B, but it is exo to ring A. 
that you have to understand similarly this bond number 2 is endo to a but it is not exo to b because the bond is not the bond carbon is not sharing the same carbon with the ring right let us go ahead with it so i think this bond which is the carbon is common to this ring and common to this double bond so that means this bond is exocyclic bond number one is exocyclic to ring a right similarly this bond is exocyclic to ring b while this bond is exocyclic to ring a now if you go ahead with it these two bonds are nothing but endo to b because they are inside b ring but this bond is exo to a because this is sharing the same carbon similarly this carbon so a has two exo bonds while b has two endo bonds let us go to this one this is i think you are able to understand is endo to a but at the same time this is exo to b here also it is endo to b but it is exo to a and you can see that this carbon also is a part of this ring so this bond is exocyclic to ring c and is exocyclic to ring a as well similarly here this bond is exo to a and b both so that is how you should be able to understand the difference between endo and exocyclic double bonds now let us go ahead with it like if uh, the double bond which is common to two rings then it is uh, considered like at any point of time the double bond will only belong to one ring so like if the molecule is having both homo annular and heterodyne concept then you have to always use a homo annular diene as the core uh, chromophore because uh, the value is more for homo so uh, that is it now let us go ahead with the rules uh, he has given these many rules now let us start with the first example now let's say your structure looks like this so first aim is to identify which type of diene it is so you have to find out whether it is homo or hetero now look into the example i think you'll be able to understand that your diene is this and this two double bonds fall into separate rings so these obviously is a heterodiene so the base value is 214 because for heterodiene the base value is 214 now you have to see in ring residue and exocyclic bonds too so ring residue means how many substituents are there to this ring moiety i uh, this is a substituent this is a substituent this is a substituent and this now imagine this was the diene right so if this is the carbon one two three four carbons how many substituents are attached to it one two three and four and that is what it is known as a uh, ring residue right so ring residue 4 into 5 now let's go ahead with exocyclic double bond just before that we revised it exo means external now this bond number one this bond number two endo they are one is also endo to this ring two is endo to this ring now is one and exo to b is one exo to b no because the carbon of one is not sharing the carbon is not same as that of the ring now let's see two is bond number two exo to a yes because this carbon is shared by a ring also so you can see that there is only one exocyclic bond which is this bond you can see this bond right this bond is exocyclic so 5 nm for exocyclic now if you can total them up you will be able to understand that it is 239 nm going ahead with the next example are you able to understand this let us see base value would be 214 again because it is heterodiene there are two alkyl groups are you able to locate them uh, if you can see this is your diene what are the alkyl groups present one and two so that means these two are the substituents that is why it is written two here now coming to the exocyclic double bond yeah there is one exocyclic double bond which is this 
that is how the total is this now let's go ahead with one more compound again you have to identify so base value would remain same because it is heterodiene i will more focus on ring residue so let's see first substituent second substituent third substituent why because this is the chain i'm talking about right so carbon is having only one two and three substituent exocyclic double bond this one is the exocyclic double bond let's go ahead with one more structure if you can see here one more structure right so now identify is it homo or hetero i have written the rules again for you here so meanwhile you also calculate along with me so now let me disclose base value would be 253 how many ring residues are there substituents substituents i think one then two then three and then four so for this particular alkene moiety there are four substituents now how many exocyclic bonds are there how many exocyclic bonds first we have to see the double bond so now is this double bond sharing the carbon with the ring yes so this is exo to this now this double bond is sharing this carbon with this ring so this double bond is exo to this ring that means we have two exocyclic double bonds so you have to total them up and you will get the desired value let's start with one more example very very fast all right so this is the base value homo annular diene they are what are the substituents one two three so ring residues are three exocyclic double bond is only one which is connected to this ring so you can see 5 nm and that is how you can calculate so very quickly i am giving you one more example and let's go ahead with the final one now here you have the option of both homo annular diene or hetero annular diene so remember in the previous slide i told you that when there is a possibility of both you go for a higher one and the higher one is homo annular that means we have selected this diene as the main diene and with respect to that only we are going to calculate the final other things so let's see one by one ring residue six exocyclic double bond two i think you are able to understand what are the exocyclic double bonds here double bonds these and this double bond extending conjugation because this double bond is actually this double bond is actually extending the conjugation because earlier it were two now it is three so you have to calculate it in this manner that the, there is a double bond which is there and it is extending the conjugation so you have to give a 30 nm for it one double bond which is exocyclic to two rings this double bond is exocyclic to two rings right so you have to call it separately and then there are two exocyclic double bonds which are these now coming to the ring residue six ring residues for that are you able to locate i'm just giving you a time one two three right what you have to do is first to identify what is the double bond ring right now this is the chain fine so what you have to do one two this is also a substituent this is also a substituent this and this so how many are they one two three four five six there are six ring residues let's go ahead with it now if the double bond is more than four how are you going to calculate it would be cumbersome to calculate so fisher cohn give us the another rule which is like this wherein you have to identify uh, x first x is the number of alkyl substituents the ring residue which we calculate y y would be the number of conjugated double bonds like how many double bonds are present in it conjugated obviously more than four are there then r endo is the number of ring with endocyclic double bonds r exo is the number of rings with how many exocyclic bonds are there and at the end you can calculate emex also so with the help of this y we will be able to understand the maximum absorptivity let us see this example beta carotene so it is having more than four double bonds you can see let us go ahead to identify x number of alkyl substituents now if you can see this violet color 1 to 11 are the double bonds are the conjugation 
what are the substituents substituents are in green color c 1 2 it is attached to this 3 also is a substituent now if you go in between you will find one more substituent go ahead with the chain yes there is one more then you go ahead with the chain here carbon number 7 then 8 9 here also you can see and then 10 and then at the end you will find these two so in all you have 10 alkyl substituents 11 conjugated double bonds r endo r endo is the number of endocyclic double bonds now if you can see there are only two rings now you see here is one double bond obviously it is endo to this ring then here also there is one double bond which is endo inside this ring so you can successfully write two exo now i was discussing exo since long i think you will be able to underestimate uh, i mean you will be able to calculate there is no exocyclic bond here see here there is no exocyclic bond here if i draw a bond here it will become exocyclic right but as of now there is no exocyclic bond so i have just shown the calculations using that formula you can simply put on the numbers and you will get the lambda max and similarly e max so with the help of fischer kuhn rule also we can go ahead with the die e's so that is all about uh, the woodward fischer rule uh, related to alkenes or die e's in the next video i would be covering uh, more of it so uh, keep liking and subscribing the channel thank you so much